Hi, this is David Wood, and welcome back to Wood on Words, the podcast for writers and independent publishers. This is episode two, and today we're going to be talking about two qualities that are essential for success in writing and in independent publishing. It's been a good week. First episode of the podcast has been well received so far, and I want to say a quick thank you to people who shared it on Twitter, Joanna Penn and Suki Sather. Is that S A T H E R? Apologies if I mispronounced your name. Also, images and quotes on Twitter shared it. Uh, if I'm missing anybody else, I'm sorry. But anyway, thanks to those who spread the word, and I hope you'll continue to do so. Having some issues getting listed on iTunes at the moment. They're, every time I go to their site, it's malfunctioning, and tech support hasn't been able to help me yet, but hoping to spread the word even farther once we're listed in iTunes. In my writing life, things are going well. Today I'm doing the final edits on a book called Blood Codex. It's a thriller that I co-authored with Alan Baxter, book one of a new series called The John Crowley Adventures. It's basically Da Vinci Code with a little more action and a lot less lectures. But we're very excited. It's always fun to launch something new, and uh, you know, hopefully readers will enjoy it and be able to come back for more because having series that are successful is really a big deal for indies. Some can do it with a lot of different standalone books and a wide variety of genres, but generally speaking, I've found that series are what are really going to keep bringing the readers back for more. And right now, I have the Dane Matic Adventure series, which does well for me, the Dane Matic Origin series, which is set in the past and tells stories of those characters when they were in the service. I have the J.D. Horace series, which has only two books in it right now, that is a spinoff of Dane Matic. And we're working on book two of the Myrmidon Files, another Dane Maddox spinoff. I've done book one of a couple different series, uh, Arena of Souls, which is uh, the Brock Stone Adventures. And that's like a 1930s era pulp series, very much like Doc Savage. And it did okay, not as well as the main action adventure, but that's one I'm looking to revisit. And then Dane Maddox sidekick, Bones Bonebreak, has one book out, and there's a story behind that. But uh, if you want to listen to that book for free, you can check it out on my YouTube channel, which you can link to. Actually, if you just go to my woodonwords.com site, you can find all the episodes there, narrated by Jeffrey Kafer, who's just a fantastic narrator. He does most of my adventure and thriller stuff. But we'll talk about that story on another episode and how it came to be. But one book out in that one, and I'm working on a second, so... Hopefully, as time goes on, you know, a lot of these will catch on and I'll be able to put out a variety of work or continue to put out a variety of work and still be able to support my family, which is, you know, another topic we'll talk about is that tension between just writing for the love and writing for a paycheck, because both of those are very real. But today, what we're going to talk about is two essential qualities. Now, I think these qualities are important in many aspects of life, work, relationships, you name it. But they're definitely important for independent publishing. If it were not for these two qualities, I would still be teaching middle school, which was not a bad job, don't get me wrong. But, you know, nothing beats sitting on your butt and making up lies for a living, which is what I get to do now and have done for a while. And the two qualities I'm talking about are patience and persistence. If you've been active in independent publishing, following the forums or blogs that talk about it, or really just keeping up with the publishing industry, you've doubtless heard some stories about the overnight success authors, the people who uh, maybe put out a book for 99 cents or posted something online and got discovered. Um, You've heard people talk about things like the days of the Kindle Gold Rush, back when Kindle was new and there weren't many authors out there and it was easy to get discovered. Or maybe there was a period where just making a book 99 cents would make you a star immediately. You know, John Locke, that's one of the reasons he became so successful, was doing lots of 99 cent books and getting that out there. Again, that was when it was a fairly new thing. Um, Then there was the whole Kindle Unlimited thing where people were breaking their full-length books up into shorter sections and treating that as a series and getting paid very well because at that point, Kindle Unlimited was not paying by the page read. They were simply paying by the borrow. 
And, of course, we've heard about the fan fiction writers make good. There's all kinds of things where we heard about people being successful very quickly. And the other thing is that whenever one of these periods, like the Kendall Gold Rush period or the 99-cent period, come about, they're pretty quickly gone and declared dead. So, really, any time you join in an independent publishing, throw your hat into the ring... There's going to be one of these so-called eras that has been proclaimed dead, and you're always going to be told you're too late. I don't think that really matters, though, because all of these eras where somebody could supposedly get discovered quickly and get rich overnight, well, it didn't happen for everybody. It happened for a few people, and those are always temporary, but that doesn't mean that you can't be successful. Now, first of all, yes, it is technically possible for any of us to put out a single book and it just go crazy. It is possible that you could be a true overnight success. That can happen. But, you know, it's also possible that Anne Hathaway is going to show up at my house, bring me a pizza and offer to give me a back rub and that my wife will let her in the door. Could happen, probably won't. And that's the reality facing us all is that, you know, it's like getting struck by lightning. It might in the publishing industry... An overnight success is probably even less likely than getting struck by lightning. So it certainly could happen, but that is not the way we want to plan our business or strategize because you can't plan for a random event like that. But now here's the good news. Just because you're not an overnight success doesn't mean you aren't going to be a success. And frankly, the more determined you are, the more patient you are, the harder working you are, the more likely that you will meet your goals. Realistically, most indie authors don't even start to come close to getting where they want to be until they have several titles out, usually in a series. And for me, it was, um, I think I had three books out. And in my case, it was a little different. I actually was working on the third book in my series, but I did have three titles out under my name, two in a series. A lot of other people say that three is the magic number. Um, just depends. But again, it's about having some titles out, cultivating your audience, which we're going to talk about in another episode, and improving your skills in terms of engaging readers and marketing your work. And so those things take time. Now, when I self-published, because we didn't call it indie publishing back then, this was uh, 2004. And back then, self-publishing meant putting out an overpriced paperback on lulu.com. The only real ebook option was a store called Fiction Wise, and they were careful about what they took. They generally wanted publishing houses, not individual authors. And so ebooks just weren't a thing. For me, it took quite a while. I started out, like in the first year, I'd get paid once a quarter, and it was about enough for us to all go out to dinner, my family of four. But I did, it did start to grow. And after a while, I, I actually could pay the electric bill quarterly and Then Kindle came along, and, you know, I didn't know what Kindle was, but I figured, why not? It's another opportunity. I got in from pretty much day one. I got into Smashwords very early, and for a short while, I was actually, I actually had the all-time number one selling book at Smashwords. That didn't last, but um, I, I tried to get in early on every opportunity that I could, and so pretty soon, I was paying the car bill every month, our car payment, and then I got to the point where I could pay the mortgage. And then I remember the first time that I realized, holy crap, my publishing income money, which and really just the Kindle money, is more than I'm making at my day job. And I didn't say anything that first month. I just paid off a credit card. And then it happened again the next month. And I kept it quiet and I paid down some more debt. So the third month in a row it happened, I showed it to my wife. And she thought that was awesome. And we left it at that. And it kept going. So then it became a game after a while. I would give her little updates. of How many I sold this month or how many I sold this year up to this point. Yeah. How, you know, where was my new peak for a day? And that was a lot of fun because Kindle was really growing. And thankfully I was riding that wave. And so I took, I want to say about nine months, putting aside, paying off debts, putting aside money in anticipation of being able to leave my day job. Now, some people do it differently. I've heard of people who save up money or take out a loan, quit their job, and write for a year. 
We'll talk about that in another episode too, um, when we talk about productivity, but that is not me. I wanted to have some confidence that this was going to continue. And I think that because my success was the snowball effect, gradually improving sales, gradually improving the quality of my work, gradually becoming more productive, that put me on the right path. And that can happen for anybody. If you do the right things, if you can write, you know, I want to say well, but I don't think I'm a fantastic writer. I just think I know what kind of stories a certain audience wants to hear. But anyway, time and effort can get you there. And there's a very good chance it will. But realistically, taking time is its a big part of publishing. We need time to learn our craft. We need time to put aside money, unless you already have a very nice income, for things like good editing and good cover art. Uh, it takes time to build an audience. It takes time to understand how the publishing industry works, particularly what's happening in independent publishing and what things we can do to to improve ourselves. So all of those things are things we need to work on. And just because our books don't start selling overnight doesn't mean we're not going to get where we need to go. And the good news is, ideally, we can use that time while we're building our audience to develop all those other skills, to build up our catalog and have a lot of offerings so that hopefully we're prepared when we get to that point that people are really noticing our work. So I really want to emphasize being patient. But I also want to say that being patient does not mean being complacent. If you're in a position like I was many years ago where I really could only do one book a year because of all my other commitments. I had a full-time day job for some of the time I was in graduate school. I was a very active dad around the house. I coached my kids in sports. I taught martial arts on the side. I was a very busy person, and I was squeezing in writing where I could, oftentimes late at night, spend a lot of time sleep deprived. The best I could do was a book a year, and that's okay. But the important thing is that throughout that time, if you're in that situation where it's taking you a while to get your work out there, also use that time to learn and to grow, to do the things that I just mentioned. Uh, participate in online writing forums. Make sure you're not doing it to the detriment of your own work. Don't use up your potential writing time listening to podcasts and messing around on forums, but look for opportunities to do those things. Listen to podcasts during your drive time, if you drive to a job or when you go out for your walk. Um, pick a reasonable amount of time to work each day that you don't wear yourself out and use some of your other available time to study and learn. And in future episodes, we'll talk about some other things you can be doing along the way. But just remember that being patient just means not giving up. Always work. Always make the effort. Hone your skills. Create new product. Grow as a writer. Grow as a marketer. Grow as a just a person who is good at engaging people. Those are all important things that you can do while being patient and waiting for the economic success that many of us hope that we'll reach. Persistence is the other quality I want to talk about. And that really goes along with patience. And it reinforces what I just said. Keep working. Except that we're all going to fail. We're going to fail probably pretty often. The more things we try, the more things will fail. And that sucks. It's terrible to be in that position. It's an awful feeling. And there will be moments that we're discouraged, that we don't believe in ourselves, that we just want to give up. And I'm just here to say, don't. It took me seven years before I could quit my day job. Seven years. I probably would have kept writing even if I could never quit my day job. But I'm glad that I got to the point where I could. It's really made a big difference in my life. It's a wonderful thing. It's great for my family. They get a lot more time with me. And frankly, publishing has been um, a lot more lucrative than my previous day job. So stick with it. There are going to be moments where something happens that we think we're doomed to failure. Maybe our first book doesn't sell right out of the gate. It makes us want to give up. We launch a new book, and it doesn't do as well as our previous books. We want to give up. 
we do an awesome ad and we learn all the little tricks, you know, how to target it. Maybe it's a Facebook ad and it falls flat. We get some bad reviews of a book. Uh, we have terrible writing days. We have trouble getting motivated at some point. And I'm sure you're filling in the blanks in your head right now, thinking of all the other things that, you know, are real, not just challenging but discouraging. None of those things mean that you are doomed to failure. It means you're experiencing the normal things that we all go through at different stages. Stick with it. Just by sticking with it, you're going to be way ahead of a lot of writers. First of all, a lot of writers or people who think of themselves as writers will never actually get around to writing their book. It's going to stay in their head. Their head's filled with ideas, but the follow-through isn't ever going to be there. Some people will start writing but never finish. I've known people who have started writing many, many books. They get 10, 20, 30,000 words in. At some point, they hit that mushy middle, and they stop, and they tell themselves, well, the next project will be better, and they never get past those starts. Some people will get their book finished, but they won't have worked on their craft, so the book will suck. So either they are looking for an agent or an editor, and they can't get it, or maybe they will write a crappy book or have a crappy book cover, crappy product description, have unrealistic pricing, any of the mistakes that we're going to talk about in, during these episodes of the podcast, and they'll put their book out and it'll fail. Some people are going to do everything right. But when they hit a challenge, a bump in the road, some things we talked about, they'll give up too. Don't be one of those writers. Just by not giving up, you're ahead of all of those people we just mentioned. And I'm here to tell you that you can be successful. There are going to be a lot of strategies we talk about that will help you, but I personally know people who took their time, worked hard, and they got there. And some people are partway there. We're all at a different place on the spectrum, but it can be done. So, don't give up. Understand you're going to struggle. Understand you're going to fail. Learn from it. Adapt and attack again. And always try to be your best. So that's the message for today. Patience and persistence. Thanks very much for listening. I hope you'll visit me at woodonwords.com. You can get lots of free content there, free audiobook, thoughts on publishing, book reviews, all that good stuff. And you can check out my author site at davidwoodweb.com. Thanks for listening, and we will see you next time.